Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Today I am pretty excited because I'm bringing you a car buying video and it is all about how to save time at the dealership. So a little bit about me, if this is your first time joining me, my name is Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families, but I'm also a former car salesperson. My family actually owns car dealerships in the St. Louis area and I started selling cars in 2016. Now that I've transitioned to doing the car mom full time though, it is my passion to share car buying tips and tricks so that you feel more empowered while car shopping. Okay, so here's what, here's my plan for the video. Um, I have a loose plan, but I'm excited just to kind of get into it. I am going to like break down the car buying process and then give little tips along the way on where you could save time. And I was like doing a little bit of research for this video just to like see what other people were saying. And I was shocked that like no one else is talking about how to save time. And I feel like that's like one of the biggest complaints that people have when car shopping. And there was like no other videos about it. So that's okay, because I have all the information you need right here. Okay, so I think the first thing that people ask me is, one, how do you even begin to start your car shopping experience? And how can you guarantee that it's not going to take weeks? It can be so overwhelming to even decide which cars to look at. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion what I would do, I would start with maybe a list of, let's say, five to six cars that you're interested in. I would do your research, I would watch my videos, I would watch other car reviewers, and I would try to narrow down that list to two three max. And those are the vehicles that I would consider test driving. I do not think you need to go test drive five or six vehicles. I think it gets very overwhelming. It takes so much time. And honestly, I see a lot of buyer fatigue happen then, and then people end up not making the best decision. So start with five or six cars, do your research, and whittle it down to two to three. There you go. I already just saved you like, what, 15 hours at a car dealership? So once it's time to start really researching those vehicles you want to test drive, any research you can do prior is obviously going to save you time at the dealership. If you can familiarize yourself with the trim levels, with the equipment, with even the color combinations, then you're not going to have to have a salesperson walk you through every different trim level. However, I do think it's a good idea to at least be open to hearing what that salesperson says. I'll talk about this a little bit more later in the video, but we're going to choose a great salesperson. So you're actually going to want to hear what they have to say. Now, once you've chosen your trim level, once you've chosen the vehicles you wanna look at, the next step is reaching out to the dealerships that have the vehicles. This is one of the most important things you can do to save money. You have to schedule an appointment ahead of time. Now, of course, dealerships take walk-ins, and I would say like probably 60 to 70% of the customers that we help are walk-ins. People do not make appointments enough. Appointments are so important. One, you're gonna make sure you have a great salesperson waiting for you. They're gonna make sure that vehicle is there and then you can just get right down to business. They already know what car you're there to look at so you don't have to do any of this like fact finding or narrowing down on a car. They don't have to then you know, see if the car is on a different lot or in the shop or at detail. Schedule an appointment with a salesperson on a specific car. Now, a big question that I get is when should you go car shopping? Is there a better time for a better deal? Well, I mean, historically, you could say that the end of the month is the best time to buy a car. I would say yes or no. I would say in today's global chip shortage, when new and used car prices are up about 25%, it doesn't matter what time of the month you go. If you do go at the end of the month, though, be warned, the wait times are longer. Because people think it's a better time to buy a car, we are always so busy in the last couple of days of the month. So if you want to save time, I would not show up on the last day of the month. Also, a big time saver is when you go to the dealership. Dealerships get busier. And it's not a matter of how prepared you are. At some point, if there's 15 customers there to buy a car, you're going to have wait times. In my opinion, the sweet spot to go is during a weekday and early in the morning. If you can be like the first customer there Tuesday at 9 a.m., you are going to have the least amount of wait time. You show up three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, I would expect higher wait times. So I know it can be difficult to like take off work or find a babysitter, but if you have the means to do it, you will definitely save time. All right, so once you have your car selected and your payment made, it's time to start preparing to go to the dealership. Now, I just wanna preface this by saying, I know that there are some dealerships and some salespeople who are slow or who may waste some time. But if I can just defend the car business for a second, as someone who is in the car business and has seen thousands of car deals happen, we get paid on commission. We also wanna get you out there in and out of the dealership as quickly as possible. Why we wanna keep you for six hours? We don't make any more money if you're there for six hours. It just takes time to buy a car, and I wish this is something that more people would understand. Think about it. The car is the second most expensive thing you're ever going to buy. There is paperwork, there is loans, there is title applications, and there's a decision-making process and a car negotiation that all goes into buying a car. 
I mean, it takes, what, 30 days to close on a house? And no one complains about how long that takes. So it might take three to six hours to buy a car. I think that one of the biggest favors I can do for you is just to set expectations. It is not a process that should be rushed. When things get rushed, paperwork gets sloppy, and bad decisions are made. So yes, we can save some time, and no one needs to be waiting there for hours and hours and hours, but I would go in there expecting to take a little bit of time, as it should. It's an expensive purchase. So another huge time-saving tip I have is to choose a good salesperson. It is so important to choose your salesperson. Now there's a couple of different platforms on how you can do this, and I've actually done a whole video on how to choose a salesperson. I'll leave a link in the description box below. But ultimately, choosing a salesperson puts you in control, improves your car buying experience, and if it is a good experienced salesperson, I promise you, they are faster at everything about the car buying process than someone who started six months ago. And no offense to them, but if we're there to save time, that's the way to do it. All right, now I wanna talk about all the paperwork and everything that you need to bring to a dealership to really ensure that you're in and out as quickly as possible. You would be amazed at the amount of people who just do not bring the right paperwork. So you obviously need your driver's license. Not only your driver's license, but if someone else is also going on the loan, they need to make sure they have their driver's license as well. So if it's like you and your husband and you're both going on the loan, make sure you both have your driver's licenses. Also, please make sure you bring an updated and valid insurance card. I'm telling you, the amount of times I've been working with a customer and they hand me an insurance card and it's outdated and they're like, oh, I just don't have the right card and then they have to call their insurance company and then they're put on hold and then it takes 15 minutes. Make sure you have a valid insurance card. Finally, if you're thinking about financing through the dealership, make sure you have things like proof of residency and at least two pay stubs. You may not need them, but if you do, you'll already have them right there. You don't have to worry about tracking that kind of things down. And then finally, when it comes to your trade, make sure you have your trade title, your lien release, your extra keys, and that make sure your trade is prepped for the dealership. I've done a whole video on how to prep your trade. I'll leave a link in the description below, but ultimately make sure your trade is pretty much cleaned out. I mean, it's going to save you a ton of time if you don't have to transfer your entire like life's belongings into the next vehicle. It will also help them appraise your trade faster if they're not having to like, you know, move things out of the way to look at it. I don't know how messy your car is. Mine's pretty messy. But making sure you have your title and your lien release is key. One more thing about the trade that is a huge time saver is if you have a payoff, meaning you still owe money on the car, make sure you get your exact payoff. The dealership is going to need this and it is so important to ensure you're negotiating a deal. The way that you can get it is I've actually have a free resource and it is a PDF download of a payoff verification form. It's basically like the same form that the dealership's gonna use. I just like made it a little prettier, but download it and fill it out ahead of time. So call the bank that has your loan and find out how much you how much is left on it, what the per diem is, where they send the check to, and all the information they need. Like I said, everything is spelled out in that form, but that is going to for sure save you some time at the dealership. Another tip, which is kind of specific, but it is something that I've seen happen a few times, is if you have any sort of like freeze or some sort of credit protection on yourself, make sure you get that removed prior going to the dealership if you're planning on financing through them. There's some companies that offer like basically a basically like identity protection to make sure that someone can't run your credit without your permission, but so many times people forget they have it and then we get there and we try to run the credit and then it gets denied and they have to call that place and then we have to call this place. It's just a whole thing. So if you can get that taken care of ahead of time, I would highly suggest it. Okay, now the next part of the car buying process I wanna talk about that I think people think takes the most amount of time is the negotiation of a car deal. Guys, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Dealerships have come so far, they really have, and a lot of dealerships are doing internet price is their best price. And if you think about it, it would do dealerships no favor to mark a car up $2,000 online. I mean, no one would even come to the dealership if our cars were that overpriced. So in my experience, and I'm genuinely saying this, in my experience, I do think a lot of dealerships are moving more towards less negotiation happening on car deals. Now, where some negotiations take a long time, though, is when it comes to the trade-in, because obviously your trade-in is gonna be different at every dealership you go to. In my opinion, if you wanna save time during the trade negotiation, I would do your research ahead of time, I would get multiple prices from places, and I would make the first offer on your trade. Let me be clear, it is the dealership's job to make money. It is the dealership's job to try to get your trade for the least amount of money possible and resell it for the most amount of money possible. That is how a dealership works. So by you saying, well, I don't know, we'll see what you can give me when you know you have better offers in your pocket, maybe from CarMax or from a different dealership or from Kelly Blue Book. You keeping those to yourself though, guys, I've seen thousands of car deals happen. Thousands of car deals happen. Never in the history of those car deals have the dealership's first number been higher than the numbers that you have in your pocket. Why would they? It is their job to make money. So be transparent. It's a better car buying experience for everybody. Say, hey, here's the highest offer I got. If you can beat this price, I'll just do it with you. A little bit of a controversial take. If you want to disagree with me in the comment section, that's fine, but I will ask you if you've seen thousands of car deals happen. 
because I have. So anyway, just make the trade offer. You know what I'm saying? Say, here's what I want, here's my highest offer, here's proof of it, print it out, why not? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to save time at the dealership. I really think that these tips will definitely cut back on how much time you spend there. But again, I really think you will do yourself a favor if you just set the expectation that it may take a few hours to buy a car. And again, that's okay, because we're gonna show up early, we're gonna bring a nice coffee, we're gonna choose a great salesperson who we actually enjoy working with, who's super knowledgeable about the car that we probably have rapport with. I'm telling you, buying a car can be a fun experience if you do it right. And it's so exciting, you're buying a new car. I mean, how fun are cars? So set the expectations, be prepared to be there for a while, but follow my tips and I promise you, you'll have a better car buying experience. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this type of video, please let me know in the comment section. I mean, I love cars, but I also love car buying. So thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you next time.